This is Codename Vermilion, reporting in from the Momiji Died Court. Raiden has currently trapped me in an endless time loop farming for a better crit damage artifact as punishment for my sins. Genshin's artifact system is one of the most terrible aspects of the game, second only to it being a financial black hole. For those of you who don't know, artifacts are five pieces of gear you can equip to a character in order to make up a bulk of their combat power, and they are obtained randomly. In a previous video, I stated that the drop rate for a single desirable artifact is approximately 0.000000. 0003%. The thing is, I didn't pull this number out of my butt. I did intermediate level statistics for a 5 second visual gag. So in this video I want to discuss how I got this number, and the madness I went through to calculate it. Some of you may be thinking, well, it can't be that difficult, right? You just have to figure out how many possible artifacts there are, then how many are actually good, and then do some simple division, and boom! You get the odds of getting a good artifact. And you would be right! Sort of. Calculating the number of possible artifacts for any given set is actually pretty easy. First, we add up the number of possible main stats. The Flower and Feather have one each, since they are always the same. Sansa 5, the Goblet has 12, and the Circlet also has 7. That's a total of 26. All artifacts generally have a pool of 10 substats they can have, with only a few exceptions, but they basically cancel each other out. Since no artifact can have the same substat twice, and there are always 4 of them per artifact as long as you upgrade them, this leaves us with 10 times 9 times 5040 configurations per main stat multiplying the main stats by the substats, and you get 131,040 possible artifacts per set in the game. Easy! Now we just gotta figure out how many artifacts out of those are actually good. Oh. This is where things get tricky. We first have to ask, what is considered a good artifact? You may say, ones with only attack, elemental damage, and crit, right? Well, yes, if you're only building DPS characters. Some characters like Zhongli and Barbara want HP percent. Some only care about stacking as much elemental mastery as possible. And then there's characters like Yelan, who benefit from both HP and DPS stats. So in actuality, what artifacts are considered good vary from character to character. And if we wanted to calculate all of the odds for every character in the game individually, that's all fine and well, but we don't want that. We just want to know, when we go into a domain, what are the chances of getting something good? So here's where we gotta start making assumptions. You ever see memes about physics classes always choosing to ignore air resistance, or friction, or even problems where they tell you to treat a penguin like a cylinder? We're gonna do the exact same thing. Why? Well, simply put, because the difference between our simplified version and the real thing is gonna be so negligible that it really shouldn't matter. And in our case, I'd argue that finding any true drop rate is nearly impossible anyhow. Remember, I was doing this for a 5 second visual gag, so all I was going for was slightly better than napkin math. So here's what I decided. Generally, when farming artifacts, players are only going to have a particular set of stats they're going for, right? They're going to be farming for DPS sets with DPS stats, or support sets with support stats, etc. Yes, this doesn't account for edge cases like Yulon, who want a mix of both, but given that there are multiple ways to build some characters, all with different focuses, I'd figured they'd basically cancel each other out. Otherwise, we'd have to do the math for every build of every character in the game, and then average that out, but once again, the difference between that and the simplified version should be negligible at best. What I did then is organize the various stats into categories. For main stats, I figured I'd lump together general stats like attack percent, defense percent, and HP percent into one category. These are the kind where they'd be mutually exclusive. If you're farming for attack artifacts, you're not going to want defense, and so forth. The flower and feather we can leave out because those never change. This brings us to about 7 main stats that are generally desirable for any one character. By the way, when I use the adjective desirable in this video, I mean applicable to the character you're farming for. For substats, there are generally 5 categories that are desirable. So that means there are about 840 desirable artifacts in any given set. 
Okay, so we divide that by the total number of artifacts, and we get 0.64%. But Vermillion, I can hear you typing in the comments. Didn't you say that the chances of getting a good artifact was 0.0000003%? You see, 0.64% are the odds of you getting any good artifact from a set. But that doesn't mean you don't care which of the five it is, or if it's even on the right set. But as we all know, there's always that one piece from that one set you really want, not just any old artifact from any set, right? So we have to multiply those odds too. So it's more like 0.0064%. But wait, there's more. You don't just farm up a good artifact and call it a day, do you? You upgrade that bad boy. Each artifact enhances its substats five times, and there's generally going to be one of the four that you want upgraded. So that makes our final answer 0.0000026%. Which would be great, if the drop chances for each stat were all equal. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Because of course Hoyo had to make sure we're farming these until the heat death of the universe, they had to make the drop chances uneven. We can't have people getting the main stats they want if they have average luck. They gotta have extra luck. Okay, so let's take all of the drop chances of each stat category and average them out. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Except it varies not only from stat to stat, it varies from piece to piece. Okay, so let's average them out per piece, and then average those out. Then we just do the same for substats, and... Wait a second. I know how to account for the fact that you can't duplicate substats if they all have an equal chance. You just subtract one outcome per subsequent attempt. But what do you do if they aren't equal? <sighs> Let's go over one more time. There are two problems here. The first is that the chances of rolling a particular substat aren't equal. But once you roll that substat, you can't roll it again. Therefore, the odds of rolling any of the other ones changes depending on what you rolled before. Since we're not Hoyo, however, we don't know the exact weightings of each stat. Therefore, it's basically impossible for us to calculate what the odds of the remaining rolls would be. So instead, let's just ignore that and focus on fixing the second problem. You see, normally we'd be able to do the thing where we'd subtract one from the possible outcomes after each roll. But in this case, there are actually multiple subsets that we want out of the pool of possible ones. Then on top of that, the odds of getting one that we want out of the remaining ones changes based on which ones we got before. Thankfully, some very smart people who are way better at math than I am came up with a solution. The only issue is that I have no idea how to use it. So first, let's take a look at the variables in this equation. We've got big K, small k, big N, and little n. According to Wikipedia, big N is the population size. Okay, so in our case, that's the number of possible substats, which is 10. Little n is the number of times you draw from the population. There are four substats per artifact, which is the number of draws, or rolls. Big K is the number of success states in the population. So the number of substats we want to roll on an artifact. I'd say there are about 5 of the 10 you'd want on any given artifact. Finally, little k is the number of observed successes, which in our case at maximum can be 4. Since we're trying to find the odds of an artifact that has all good substats, we want the maximum number of successes, so we'll set that to 4. Then we plug in the numbers. I found out that putting numbers in a set of parentheses like this is called a binomial, which I don't really understand, but I found a binomial calculator online, so I just plugged in the numbers to that and solved the rest. And voila! The chances of getting the substats you want on an artifact is roughly 2.4%. Mamma mia! Okay, so let's do this one last time. When you go into a domain, an artifact has a 1 in 2 chance of being for the set that you want. Then, it has a 1 in 5 chance of being the piece that you want. Then, the average chance of it having the right main stat is about 12.66%. The chances of that artifact having a set of 4 substats that you want is 2.4%. And finally, the chances of all 5 substat rolls being the ones that you want is just under 1 tenth of a percent, giving us the value I showed at the beginning. 0.000003%. And this is rounded up and assuming all substats have an equal chance of being rolled. So in all likelihood, the odds of you getting the artifact that you want are even worse. Let's put some things into perspective, shall we? The funny percentage I calculated is so infinitesimally small that on its own we can't comprehend just how bad it really is. 
One in three million is no joke. According to the chances given by the Encyclopedia Britannica, you're just under 218 times more likely to get struck by lightning in your lifetime. Is this what you want? Come on, strike me down, Zeus. Now you shall perish. You don't have the ball. However, let's say that you're okay with a suboptimal artifact. Let's say you get an artifact on the right set with the main stat that you want, three of the four substats are the ones that you want, and three of the five substat rolls are ones that you want. As it turns out, the odds rocket up to 0.0047%. Still terrible, but wow, what an improvement. The real lesson here is to lower your standards. Make the most of the artifacts that you have and appreciate the good ones you do get even if they aren't optimal. Let's be real here, you don't need hyper-optimized artifacts at the highest level of play, just ones that are good enough. But just in case you're curious, here's a quick bonus before I finish out the video. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Statistics is all about finding answers to questions based off of data, right? So I found myself asking, assuming I used all of my free resin on nothing but artifacts, what are the average odds of me getting a god roll in a year? Let's figure it out. First, I'm not going to count any fragile or transient resin in the amount of resin you get in a year, because let's be real here, the typical player would probably wind up just using them to make up for any resin that they missed. That leaves us with 200 resin per day, or 5 artifact runs per day, or 10 gold artifacts per day. That means 3,650 rolls per year. But wait! Genshin also has a system that lets you recycle three unwanted gold artifacts into one gold artifact from a set of your choice. For simplicity's sake, let's just say we don't care what set or piece the god roll comes from, we're just trying to figure out how many we get in a year. So the recycling system will get us about 1,781 extra rolls for a total of 5,431 rolls. Then we just multiply it by our odds of getting a god roll, and the total chances of getting a single god roll in a year is 3.36%. Yippee! Wow, I honestly did not expect to be in single digit territory. Of course, we're talking about an artifact that could be from any set, and could be any one of the five. If you care about those specifics, it plummets back down to 0.336%. <laughs> Lol. Lamau even. And before you go, what would a video about artifacts be if I didn't take the opportunity to flex mine? Feel free to post your best ones in the comments. Thanks for watching, and may the odds be ever in your favor.